Hello, my name is Beth. I am an orthopedic nurse at the UW Hospital and Clinics. I am pleased to share some important information with you as you prepare for your total hip replacement surgery. Your pre-surgery workup visit should be done within 30 days before surgery. This visit can take from two to six hours. During this time, you will have a physical exam and check in with admissions. You may also meet with anesthesia. The complete physical exam may be done by your primary medical doctor or surgeon, depending on your medical conditions and insurance coverage. The physical exam may include blood work, an EKG or electrocardiogram, x-rays, and other tests depending on your medical condition. Your doctor may discuss donating your own blood in the event you need a transfusion during or after surgery. We will discuss any medications to stop prior to surgery, which may include herbal products, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, anticoagulants, aspirin, and other medications. As with all major surgeries, there are risk factors associated with it. Your doctor or surgeon will discuss these with you. We strongly suggest you quit smoking before surgery. Smoking will impair bone healing and could have a very negative impact on the outcome of your surgery. We also recommend avoiding secondhand smoke for the same reasons. If you need assistance to quit, please speak with your doctor or nurse. Planning for discharge. You should plan to discharge after spending three nights in the hospital. After your discharge, you will continue to work on your rehabilitation and recovery. Some patients discharge to their home. Others benefit from discharging to a skilled nursing facility for a period of time prior to returning home. It is important to prepare your home before surgery whether you go directly home or to a skilled nursing facility. To prepare your home in advance, you may want to move frequently used items from lower shelves to waist level for easier access. To prevent falls at home, remove rugs, clear furniture from pathways, and take steps to declutter your home. Watch out for pets that may run in your path, water spills, bare slippery floors, long cords such as phone or fan cords, and ice on steps and porches. You and your family play an important role in making plans for your discharge to home. Someone will need to drive you home. If you have a choice, a four-door vehicle is best for transportation. If you need help with a ride home, be sure to let your nurse know well in advance. We can help you arrange transportation, but depending on your insurance coverage, there may be a cost to you for this service. You should plan for someone to be with you the first night you are home. You may want to make arrangements for help with meals, child and pet care, and household chores, such as laundry, vacuuming, and yard work. Some patients have found it helpful for family members or friends to prepare and freeze meals in advance. Most patients who go home need home health services for blood draws and physical therapy. A nurse case manager or social worker will work with you and your insurance company to arrange this. Most patients who have had a total hip replacement will need to take a blood thinner medication to prevent blood clots for two to four weeks after surgery. Your doctor will decide how long you need to take this medication before you are discharged. Depending on the blood thinner your doctor orders, blood draws may be necessary to monitor the effectiveness of the medication. During your home health visit, the nurse will draw your blood and may also check your incision. Physical therapy is an important part of your recovery. If you discharge to your home, arrangements will be made for a physical therapist to come to your home. At times, patients are able to go to physical therapy at an outpatient clinic. The social worker or case manager may help you with these arrangements. The night before surgery, do not drink alcohol after 8 p.m. and do not eat solid food after midnight. Do not drink milk or juice with pulp after midnight. Stop drinking clear liquids four hours before your surgery. Examples of clear liquids include water, popsicles, carbonated beverages, juices without pulp or solid material, tea without milk or creamer, coffee without milk or creamer, jello gelatin, but only if it's homemade, clear protein drinks, and bouillon cube broth or consomme broth. Examples of some things you should not eat or drink are store-bought jello gelatin, jello gelatin with fruit, 
and canned chicken broth with fat in it. It is important that you follow the instructions provided by your doctor. If the instructions are not followed, your surgery may be canceled. A nurse will call you the day before surgery to review instructions, inform you what time to arrive at the hospital, and the location of where you should go. If your surgery is scheduled on a Monday, then the nurse will call you the Friday before. If you have questions about your pre-op preparation, please be sure to ask the nurse when she calls. On the day of surgery, plan to arrive at first day surgery at least two hours prior to your scheduled surgery time. A nurse will ask you questions about your health and help you get ready. A member of the anesthesia team will also meet with you and place an IV for fluids and medication. Surgery may take two hours or longer. Your family will be directed to the surgical waiting area where they will wait while you are in surgery. They will be notified when your surgery is finished. Your doctor will talk with them in the surgical waiting area after your surgery is done. Staff in the surgical waiting area will direct them to your room. After your surgery, you will be taken to the post-anesthesia care unit, also known as PACU, where staff will monitor you as you begin your recovery from surgery. They will monitor your vital signs and pain level. Family and friends are not allowed in the PACU. Once you are stable, usually in one to two hours, you will be transferred to the inpatient orthopedic unit. Family and friends are able to visit you once you are settled in your room. Your nurse will continue to monitor you after your arrival on the orthopedic inpatient unit. This will include a neurological assessment of strength and sensation, dressing check, pain assessment, and a systems assessment. To monitor urine output and bladder emptying, we will use a bladder scan machine. It works like an ultrasound machine to measure the amount of urine in your bladder. You may see several pieces of equipment after surgery and you may have several drains in place. The tubes and drains you may see include a face mask or tube under your nose to give you oxygen, a drain in your wound, a catheter to drain urine from your bladder, and an intravenous or IV pump for fluids. To prevent blood clots, you may wear TED hose or elastic stockings, SCDs or sequential compression devices, which are leg wraps that inflate and deflate on your legs, or your doctor may decide to use foot pumps instead of the SCDs, which inflate and deflate on your feet. It is important to advance your diet slowly after surgery. This allows for your bowels to wake up and prevent nausea. You may start on a clear liquid diet depending on the doctor's orders and the nurse's assessment. Your nurse will monitor your readiness for advancing you to solid foods. You will be taking several medications during your hospital stay. You will be given a stool softener to prevent constipation and promote bowel movements. To help prevent blood clots, a blood thinning medication may be given in the form of a pill or injection. A course of antibiotics will be administered by an IV. Pain relievers, usually Tylenol, in addition to narcotics may be given. There are other medications your doctor may prescribe based on your medical conditions. One of the biggest concerns after surgery is how pain will be managed. Although everyone's pain tolerance varies, you should expect some degree of pain after surgery. There are several options your doctor may choose for pain management. He may order a combination of oral pain medication, intravenous pain medication, or an epidural. An epidural is a catheter inserted into your epidural space in your back to provide pain relief. Usually the epidural catheter is removed the day after surgery. Our goal is to manage your pain with pills because they provide longer acting coverage than other medications provide. Some patients find relief from methods other than medication. These include ice therapy, deep breathing exercises, distraction, and repositioning. Your nurse may use a combination of these techniques. To aid in relaxation, we offer a special TV channel called the CARE channel, which provides a continuous relaxation environment. Your nursing staff can help you find this on the television in your room. You are a very important part of your pain management plan and will need to talk with the nursing staff about setting realistic goals. They will work closely with you to find what works best for you. 
A good pain management plan will allow you adequate pain control to work with physical therapy and progress your activity level. Good pain control should also allow you to rest comfortably without becoming too sleepy. Everyone responds differently to pain medications and it often takes a period of time to find what works best for each individual patient. There are potential complications you may be at risk for after surgery. These include pneumonia, deep vein thrombosis, DVT or blood clot, hip dislocation, infection, and constipation. The following sections will discuss each of these potential complications in more detail. To prevent pneumonia after surgery, the nursing staff will show you how to use an incentive spirometer. An incentive spirometer is a device which provides you with a visual marker while taking deep breaths. You should also cough and deep breathe. Using the incentive spirometer and coughing and deep breathing helps your lungs to expand and prevent secretions from pooling in your lungs. Increasing your activity level and participating in physical therapy may help prevent pneumonia. To use the incentive spirometer, first, exhale. Place your lips tightly around the mouthpiece. Next, take a slow deep breath to raise the flow rate guide between the arrows. Hold it. Continue to inhale, keeping the guide as high as you can for as long as you can, or as directed by your nurse or respiratory therapist. Then, remove the mouthpiece and breathe out as usual. Slowly repeat 10 times each hour while you are awake. Patients who have had this surgery may be at risk for getting a deep vein thrombosis or blood clot. The most common symptoms of a dangerous blood clot in your leg are severe leg swelling, pain, redness, or tenderness in your calf. A clot in your leg can go to your lungs. This is called a pulmonary embolism, or PE. The most common symptoms of a pulmonary embolism are shortness of breath or chest pain while inhaling. If any of these symptoms occur while you are in the hospital, notify your nurse right away. If any of these symptoms occur after you have been discharged from the hospital, you should immediately contact your doctor's office or go to the emergency room. To decrease your risk of getting a blood clot, you may wear TED hose, SCDs or foot pumps, and take medicine to help thin your blood. Activity is also important in the prevention of blood clots. It is important that you participate in daily physical therapy and do exercises in bed as discussed with the nursing and physical therapy staff. Hip dislocation precautions. Lifetime modifications of your activities may be necessary to prevent hip dislocation or popping the ball out of the socket. Patients with hip replacements should follow these rules. Do not cross the hip replacement leg across the other leg. Do not bend the artificial hip more than 90 degrees. Your knee should stay below your belt. And do not let your hip turn inward or pigeon-toed. Some signs and symptoms of infection include a persistent fever of 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 38.1 degrees Celsius for 24 hours, an increase in swelling, an increase in redness around the incision, or an increase in drainage from the incision. If you experience any of these symptoms after discharge, you should contact your doctor's office. A mild fever is common following joint replacement surgery and does not always indicate infection. The fever should slowly decrease with time. The combination of surgery, narcotic pain medication, decreased activity level, and a change in your diet can play a role in becoming constipated. It is not uncommon to have a problem with your bowels functioning normally after surgery. Medications may be ordered to help prevent or treat constipation. To help you stay regular, Eat a high fiber diet, drink plenty of fluids, increase your activity level, and participate in daily physical therapy. The nursing staff will work with you in deciding the best options for dealing with constipation. Leaving the hospital. Once your doctor has decided you are ready to be discharged, there are many things that need to be done before you leave the hospital. These tasks may take several hours. Your nurse and other healthcare team members will talk with you about your plan for discharge. Your nurse will give you instructions about your diet, incision care,
bathing, driving, limitations on activity, and your follow-up appointment. Caring for your incision at home is important to prevent infection. In general, you should sponge bathe for about two weeks after surgery to avoid getting the incision wet. Do not use any creams, lotions, ointments, or alcohol near or on your incision. The nurse will instruct you how to do dressing changes. She will teach you the normal and abnormal appearance of a post-surgical incision. Many patients are concerned about drainage from their incision. It is normal to have a small amount of clear or slightly blood-tinged drainage from your incision. If you see an increase in the drainage or a change in the color of the drainage after discharge, you will need to contact the clinic and discuss this with the clinic staff. To keep the incision area clean and dry, wash around the incision area gently with soap and water and then let air dry. Do not wash directly on the incision. Once the incision area has air dried, cover it with the clean dressing you are provided with at discharge. It is important that you progress your activity and continue doing the exercises physical therapy has taught you. Remember to maintain total hip precautions at all times. To maintain total hip precautions while you are sleeping, you may be given a wedge-shaped pillow or be instructed to use two pillows to place between your legs for six weeks. This helps to avoid crossing your legs. In general, after six weeks, you may sleep with just one pillow between your legs. You will have a follow-up appointment with your doctor or physician's assistant approximately two weeks after surgery. The unit pharmacist will review your medications, the name, purpose, dose, how to take it, and side effects. If you currently have a co-payment for medications and plan to have your prescriptions filled at the pharmacy before you leave the hospital, please remember to bring money for your co-payment. If you are unclear about how to pay for your medications, a member of the case management team may help you. Please check with your orthopedic doctor before dental visits or other surgeries. It is likely they will recommend a preventative dose of antibiotics. This may be lifelong depending on your doctor. When you are ready, you may resume sexual activity. Do not drive for two weeks or while taking narcotic pain medication. At your two-week checkup, your surgeon will let you know when you can drive. Stretching every hour will decrease stiffness as you travel. Metal joint implants may trigger metal detectors in airports. You will receive a joint replacement card at your first clinic visit. This card does not guarantee you will be able to pass through airport security without being searched. It will simply provide information to airport security. The overall recovery time after surgery varies from person to person. On average, by six to eight weeks, you should no longer be using a cane, crutches, or walker. Surgery can cause you to feel weak and tired. In most cases, common sense will tell you when you are doing too much. On the other hand, too little activity can delay the return of your strength and stamina. It is important to continue the exercises as provided by the physical therapist to speed up your recovery. All of our staff are committed to help you recover from surgery and prepare you for your discharge so you can continue your recovery and rehabilitation. We hope this video has provided you with information about what to expect with your upcoming surgery. Please ask staff members any questions you may have. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and hope your surgical experience is a positive one. Thank you for watching.